Well, hello, my friends. Welcome to the Artist Next Level podcast. We are super excited to be here with you. My good friend Drew and I, we will be today addressing, you know, the topic of asking ourselves in the studio 10 critical questions to make sure we're hitting the mark. A lot of times, you know, we rush our work. We're trying to do things quickly just so that we can get it fast on the gram, on the Instagram or social media. Today, we're going to actually dive deep into questions that you need to ask yourself, you know, to make sure you are hitting the mark in your studio. So mm -hmm. don't go anywhere. It's going to be a great conversation. And by the way, this is part one of two sessions where we're going to talk about the same topic. My name is Sergio Gomez. I'm an artist, curator, gallery owner, author, and co-founder of the Art Next Level program. And my goal with this channel is to make marketing and art business easy so that you can grow your art career, find new opportunities, sell more art, and spend more time creating in the studio. So if you like that, make sure you click on the subscribe button and click on the little bell so that you receive notifications of our future videos. Well, hello, my good friend, Drew. Good to see you today. Super happy to connect with you once again. How are you? I'm very well, sir. Yeah, here in... Uh in warm Kuala Lumpur and you are in Miami, you've got the morning, I've got the evening and it uh, looks like we got a lot of similar kind of things happening uh, with our art behind us. So that's, uh, <laughs> yeah, here we that's are true. again, we're, we're in unison, we're, we're uh, connected in some form. So this is going to be <laughs> a great, great chat uh, and it's needed, you know, and it's an important chat and I am looking forward to this. This serves well because you are in the middle of a series working on multiple mm -hmm. pieces. Uh, you are also approaching uh, some new new ways of working in your studio, you know, yes. also myself too, you know, I'm working now in one piece versus many, which is different for me and on an easel versus, you know, a wall. So mm -hmm. again, uh, we are both, I think, in, in the middle of experimentation and doing different things. Yeah. And uh, I think these questions also will serve us well uh, as we review them. So let's go yeah. with uh, number one. And our friends, what I suggest you do is you take a piece of uh, paper or pencil or write them in your phone, open a new notepad, and then write these questions because these are really good questions. So we're going to start with the first five today. The first one is, does your art work in the context with your other work? I love that question too because, yeah. uh, you know, it's kind of a question that, that brings us to a retrospect in our art to look back at what we have done before, let's see mm -hmm. where we came and see where we are at now. Uh, let's talk about this question. You know, why this one do you think is important? Well, I think it's I think it's probably top of the list because we do tend to, you know, and I'm mm -hmm. guilty of this as well. Uh, you know, when we're we're working on a new body of work, of course, you know, the old adage, we're all only as good as our last exhibition. We try to get better. We try to do th something different. Um, and sometimes we go completely off from center with our work that, you know, the center that we once had or we should have in our work, in our series work, uh, our narrative and that kind of thing. Sometimes we go astray from that. Mm -hmm. And I have as well. Uh, I know you have. Uh, we, we all do. We get excited about something new and we throw it out into social media when it's not quite done. And mm -hmm. uh, th that can really that can really put the brakes on, on how you are viewed to your public. They're mm -hmm. expecting one thing and they get another. And I think that that is a, it's a really important thing to consider. We do it sometimes because we want to have some fun. And, and mm -hmm. if you do that, in my opinion, if we do this and I also do it, but I always make very clear that this is sort of a comical or a fun piece and shouldn't be taken seriously. This is just something I, you know, whipped up in the studio that I thought was funny or iconic mm -hmm. or something just mm -hmm. at that one time. But I always make very clear that it's not part of any series. It's not part of, of you know, the greater amount of work that I will produce. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So there's, there, there, in a way, it's kind of not, uh, <clears throat> it's not uh, doing anything terribly bad. Right. You have to be conscious, conscious of yeah. every piece that you present particularly if you are working at the moment and have been sharing your series work and then you throw this kind of crazy painting in out of one or <laughs> yeah. whatever yeah the odd one out and it really stands out and you know that i hate to say it but it's uh generally speaking that's the one that people are going to remember <laughs> you know at least yeah. for the short term they're going to remember that one piece because it stood out and has been a bit of odd 
right? Right, right. And, so and it's, not, it's, it's not the regular Drew Harris painting. And yeah. people will say, oh, yeah, I saw that crazy piece you did. And then we have to explain, oh, you know, well, that was kind of a fun piece. Yeah. Uh, so and and, it, and it's, yeah. And I was going to say, you know, as, as soon as we experiment, right? We do experimentation all yeah. the time and we try things. And sometimes one of those funny things or one crazy thing that you did in two minutes may lead to an idea that then it's going to start a whole of new course. series, right? But yeah. I think the, the, the key word, kind of like what you said, is, is the context that we give, right? So if you're going to share that piece, which is like an odd one, you know, say, you know, like, hey, this, hey guys, you know, I want to share it with you. This is an experiment, right? That I just, yeah, yeah. that I'm working with, right? I, and uh, have give a little story, you know, why did you, why was it fun for you to create? You know, it, it's, yes. I think that always like the words uh, with the image are important, right? Because uh, they, yeah. they do have, uh, they, they provide the context, right? That we're talking about. Of course, here. of course. And even like, you know, I, I'm working, I, go ahead. Yeah. Even as I'm working on this new piece, you know, which I started um, mm -hmm. when I set up my studio here, you know, I, I started going in some directions and like, I, I don't know how it relates to, you know, the work that I have done in the past, but I'm going to take a couple of chances. And so I, I've been like asking myself this question on and off, you know, as to um, how this new piece relates to to the others. And there are some things that will relate and some things we will be perhaps new because yeah. I'm under a new environment. Mm -hmm. But you're not out there posting it as a finished piece yet because it, it no, is I, experiment. I said you work in progress. Only, mm -hmm. Yeah, and the only time we're ever seeing it is, you know, in videos like this uh, mm -hmm. where it's behind you and it's a work in progress and it's very clearly a work in progress. Right, exactly. Uh, that That can be... You know, it can be you're inviting you're inviting your public into your studio for that yeah. for that purpose. You know, and and it is actually it can work, but mm -hmm. you have to be very very clear that this is just a work in progress. That's correct. Uh, and if it's not if it's not fitting with the work that you normally do, then you run the risk of looking a little too uh, scattered. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I I think when collectors see an artist being scattered or, or erratic in their approach to their work, <laughs> it doesn't prove to be very, this doesn't prove confidence, you know, I totally agree. Collect. Yeah. So I totally agree. That, that, I think in that context, as we say, does your art work in context with your other work? I think that we basically explain it there. Yeah. Perfect. Let's go to number two. So my friends take yeah. a, Again, take a note, number two, and this is a question that we came up with. Is my personal message and narrative in the work strong? You know, is my personal message and narrative in the work strong? That's a that's a strong question, a strong statement too, yeah. you know, thinking about I'll let you take it. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'll, I'll, I'll start it, then I'll throw the ball at you. So uh, definitely, right, thinking about, that's the question of, of what am I doing, right? What am I doing? What, what, am I, what is my message? What is my language? What is my idea? What is the emotion, right, that I want to do? And it has nothing to do with is the, is the painting or the artwork figurative or abstraction. It's nothing to do with, with your style, but it's your idea, your, uh, the emotion, the, the, the voice that you want to put out there. Now, is it a strong, you know, is, is, it, is it viable? Is it, uh, are, you, are you excited? about what you want to say, you know, what you want to express. That's, that's kind of like how I see that question, right? If I'm like wishy-washy about my narrative, my idea, then I think the painting will do that. Yeah. What is your take on it? Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think, well, I, I agree. I mean, I, I have, I have, you know, when we're building series works, we're often looking back at our, our older series works. And you know what works, and know, and you know what didn't work uh, in a, in a body of work. But you generally, as an artist, I think many of us have, you know, a social cause. For example, mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> yours in in for for example would be the the idea of sort of the life cycle. You know, the mm -hmm. the figure a life cycle through birth to death to, you know, spirituality and that kind of thing. And you've been very consistent with that. Uh, my work might be a little bit from about the late nineties to the, to today has been a lot of it has been sort of environmental or mm -hmm. loosely 
loosely environmental. And I think uh, it's important to for artists to keep that narrative strong uh, throughout. You can change in the materials you do. You can change in the, uh, you know, in how you present in scale uh, or where you're presenting. But I think as an artist, you you have a message and people get to know you for this message and they know that this is important to you. You know, keeping it consistent is really important. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so, keep, keeping that, keeping that, that uh, connection. And I always think, you know, like when I'm making a work, you know, a painting or a drawing, yeah. you know, I, yeah. I see that one, I see that work as a one sentence on a longer paragraph, right? Which is the context of mm. other words, how this one sentence fits uh, you oh, know, in the context That's... of other things, you know? And then a body of work, I see that as a, almost like a chapter, right? right. Uh, in, That's a great in way book. of looking at it, actually. I love that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's a that's a really fantastic way of looking at it because in that that ensures that you are being consistent. You know, if your chapters right. change so dramatically, mm -hmm. then those lines are going to change. Right. You know, right. as you're working, and if you recognize mm -hmm. the lines are changing, then you know the paragraph will change. You know, at the end, right, uh, or the yeah. next paragraph will change, and that and that that can be not a good thing. Uh, mm -hmm. I think because we build we build a a certain uh, uh, public presence with our work and message, yeah. and when we when we go off that message, you really notice it. People notice it, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and then you it's a then there is that that period of time that you have to rework everything to get your yeah. confidence back with whatever narrative you've got going, and that takes a lot of work. It takes mm -hmm. a lot of work to rebuild the confidence, not only in yourself, in the work, but with your audience as well. Yeah, no, yeah. totally agree. And this is uh, one, uh, for example, uh, the other day I was coaching an artist and, um, you know, he was having trouble kind of like say what he wanted to say and like jumping too much between one piece and the other. So my advice to him is like, why don't you do a series, you know, pick something you want yeah. to talk about, the one idea, one thought. And instead of making one off, you know, one mm. painting about that, make a whole series, make 10 of them. Out of those 10, mm. probably, you know, half of them are going to be good and probably two of them are going to be amazing, you know? Mm. But it's, it, yeah. it's, it's that process of, again, you know, saying different sentences in this one paragraph and out of those, you, you, you read a book, you know, you read a, a paragraph and there's one sentence that's going to like, bam, right? It's like, it's got the punch. <laughs> but you yeah, need the whole yeah, context sure. of that paragraph to get to that. You know, that's kind of the analogy that I have and that I share with this artist, you know, do more, yeah. you know, do, do yeah. think about something or an emotion and then just do do a number of them and, and then yes. just go from yeah. there. Mm -hmm. Well, I think, you know, you bring up a very interesting point, which I hadn't really thought of visual artists in this way, but but if you take the analogy of the writer, mm -hmm. you know, look at the writers that we were, were that are famous for, for example, we'll take Stephen King. Yeah. You know, if he started writing, you know, I don't know, uh, teenage novels that are based around, you know, childhood games or something, you'd go, you could scratch your head and you'd think, well, he's a horror writer. <laughs> right, he's that's what he's known for, right? Yeah, you mystery. know what I mean. Uh, yeah, that's probably not a great analogy, but any of the writers that we follow, we're expecting their voice. This is their voice, mm -hmm. this is their narrative. Uh, and there's nothing worse than seeing you know, you're excited about a particular author, for example. And I have many, I'm, I'm a voracious reader, so yeah. I tend to follow a certain probably a very strong handful of uh, mm -hmm. writers in the US around the world. Mm -hmm. And I, I anticipate them and their next book, you know, and when they, when I find out that there's a new book, I'm yeah. the first one on it, you know, looked researching it, try to find it. Can I get it on my Kindle? That kind of thing. <laughs> and sometimes I have been so disappointed when mm -hmm. I've gotten this, this, this new book by a particular author that I really like, and it's the narrative is not his or hers and it's mm -hmm. completely gone awry and you go wait a minute 
where did he what what happened here what why did they change you know mm -hmm. and they all also see from public reaction that maybe they'd gone in a direction that the public probably wasn't ready for them to go in you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and but, they fall back it. on their on their narrative on their <laughs> you know, yeah. on their confident narrative and i think it's very similar to artists yeah when we go off on the tangents right. uh, it takes a bit of time to get your confidence and the confidence of those reviewing your work to come mm -hmm. back it's a real yeah. danger it can be a danger yeah. Here's a here's a here's a here's a, que a, a question that challenges that. Though sometimes the artist needs to do that for the sake of, you know, not the not the public because you have to change, and maybe the eventually yeah. the audience will follow. <laughs> well, you know, see, the purist in me would say that's exactly what we need to do. The artist needs to change <laughs> first. It has to be about me. It has to be about what I do, and and you know what yeah you know, screw the public but the public you have to pay, keep them in mind you can't offer them something completely different too quickly i think mm -hmm. if you're building a, a a career and a long career i think you you would you would it's a it's a bit of uh it's a challenge mm -hmm. to do this mm -hmm. so yeah. i think you have to be very very critical of your own work is it is it going too far? I think there's that fence uh, that there's that jump over point. You know, you, you have to, you can come up to it, but you don't fall over it. You know, mm -hmm. and I think that, that, that is a good thing. Push the boundaries right to the very edge, but don't go over because if you go over, chances are you're going to, you know, you're going to have some explaining to do. And when you mm -hmm. have to explain your work, it means that you're really starting from to a certain degree, scratch. I, I know a lot of people would say that's that it probably doesn't happen in their careers, but it doesn't mind. I know I've I've jumped into another series, you know, from a very strong series into something completely different, and my public was like, hmm, "Not sure." Mm -hmm. Yeah, it, I, it's I think one the, of the public also gets used to you as well, used to seeing. There's a comfort in seeing new work from Sergio Gomez, but we know it's Sergio Gomez. We know that there, the narrative is there. Right. And right. It, but if you started doing pink balloons or, you know, whichever, that was so off, obviously not you, we'd all go, I think we, he's lost his mind. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think there's, there's, there has been a handful of artists who have been able to pull it through, you know, over, over, uh, over time, you know, one of, one of, well, but Jeff Koons, you can still see a lot of his, his you know, his imagery. Yeah, I suppose around. his narrative. But I would, like, for example, Gerard Richter, you know, when I went to see his, yeah, uh, of course. Yeah. Uh, his retrospective in New York, uh, it was my one of my favorite artists. I really had to go see it. Um, like, from room to room, for somebody who would not know about Gerard Richter would think he's a totally different artist, right? You would go one room yeah, and you have, true. like, yeah. this highly uh, representational portrait. Then you go in the next room and it's a sculpture with glass. Like, who's that? You know, it's, it, yeah. it's the same guy, you know, and then you go to the next one, like paintings of clouds. And then the next one, like um, next room, you go like these giant paintings with squares of color, like like pixels. And then yeah. you go into the well, next he one. Well, he's a good example. He's a good <laughs> yeah. example of, of someone a that one. had the confidence <laughs> to pull it's it like, off. To pull it off, yeah, yeah. which is difficult but, to do. If I, I were to do that, I would be, be like. <laughs> yeah, well, you see, most of us would. We'd just be considered like we're just we're just going in too many directions it's too fast. Crazy, yeah. mm -hmm. But for some reason, he's one of the few artists in the world. And by the way, 2024, apparently Gerhard Richter is the artist of the year. Oh, wow. that's okay. He will, he's here to be featured all year round. So you're going to see a lot of Gerhard Richter. That's what I read mm -hmm. today. Uh, oh, wow. <clears throat> not sure where I read that, but that was it. Uh, so that's his year, but you know, he mm -hmm. is one of the artists that was able to pull it off and, and I think all of us as, as artists have, have questioned it, the same yeah. concept, mm -hmm. you know, you say every room was different and yeah, it, 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 it was, but for some reason he was able to pull it off kind yeah. of seamlessly, but I have, yeah. I have an idea. 
I think the reason he was able to, and I think it's a, it's a good, it's a good tangent to, to talk about. I think one of the reasons he was able to pull it off is because in everything that he went, you know, to do, he didn't just go and do one piece. Like he was doing, uh, really let's say a series and then like, sure. okay, I'm going to do this one. And then that's it. No, he actually went all in obsessively into yes. like, if he was going to do this abstract square paintings, you know, like he did tons of them. Tons of them, somewhere yeah. good, somewhere bad. And then when he uh, started doing the, like the, the squeegee pieces, right? Those yeah. streaks. Yeah. He didn't do just one or two. He just went obsessively and did tons of them. And and he didn't rush them. You know, as he was working on this, he really took a lot of time to um, get this work done. Like he, he's a very thoughtful yeah, guy. Of course. I, I love reading his interviews. And, uh, yeah. and uh, I think, you know, when we go through these questions, I think he, you know, consciously asked himself these questions, you know, as he was going through each of those changes and, of course, and, and, uh, and not just, uh, like sometimes, you know, we might, we, we might think that, oh, you know, uh, an artist just goes back and forth about different things, but, you know, he was really consciously delving into that, whatever he was doing, 100%. And well, you know, pushing it. Pushing like I it. say, he is one of the artists that I, I somehow we gave him grace and we gave him yeah. the leeway to do that, you know, as a public mm -hmm. for, for mm -hmm. decades, I've followed his work and, you know, some series I wasn't as big on, but you know, an yeah. observation with that too, is, you know, he, he would squeegee the, uh, the original uh, images of people. So they were these sort yeah. of clouded images of, you have kind of mm -hmm. squeegeed people, you know, in the <laughs> yeah. background. You could you could see that they were kind of in movement, and then mm -hmm. he went to the complete abstraction of just pure pigment and paint, where mm -hmm. he was squeegeeing again. So there was the element of kind of a continuation of that, yeah, which and I love. I think that, yeah, if you were, so yeah, true. and I think if you were to look at all his work, you would find mm -hmm. one or two elements in there that was a continuation Literally. of the the previous work. So I think in that case, this is why we've given him yeah. some some uh, grace. But I think there are many artists, yeah. and there's some even here in my part of the world that have jumped from, I mean, extreme jumps. Whereas mm -hmm. you know, I was questioning one one week, I was looking at one artist, and then the next week, I was looking at the same artist, but I didn't even know it was the same artist. Artist, yeah, you know, and they were doing these things in publicly too. Yeah, and you were saying, yeah. well. And just rushing it, you know, just cranking things for cranking. Rushing things, it, yeah. rushing it. Yeah. yeah. Which leads us to, probably to the next one, which is a good one. Sure. Does it reflect yeah. my best effort? <laughs> Does it reflect my best effort? Now, this time? is a really, this is a really, oh, it's a, it's, again, we went right back to, you know, what I was saying earlier about the, the idea of going into a gallery and you're standing there and you're going, oh my God, it's really, I don't think they gave it the best effort. Mm -hmm, and mm -hmm. we've all been guilty of it. I'm not saying I'm perfect and you're not perfect. And right. we've done this yeah. before. We've, we've provided work to galleries or showings mm -hmm. group or solo where we've said, should have, should have thought that one through a little bit more, mm -hmm. you know? Mm -hmm. uh, and it's a sore point in, in, in our history. We keep, right. th those things keep coming back to haunt us. Uh, right. Those moments. Yeah. But I think we try. The, the, it is most essential, uh, mm -hmm. you know, is to put a, your, the most effort you can do. And, you know, um, there's always room to go more, but do as much as you can with the yeah. time you've got, you know, and, the, you know, if you've got a show to do, sometimes you run out of time to push it even further, but do as best you can, I think. Yeah. No, uh, yeah, that's, that's true. That's a, uh... This is a good one. Um, I see, and I see the the effort part in relation, not of as a comparison, the comparing myself with other artists, but comparing myself to my work, right? To me. So, yes. what those what those best effort means to me, based on what mm -hmm. I know, what I can do, is not mm -hmm. it's not a matter of did I spend twenty hours versus fifty, or you know, you know, because when you compare one artist to another, the artist could take you know three months to make one piece because it's so complex or detailed, or you know, versus yes. others can do one piece in one day. So it's, it's the effort compared to yourself to, 
to what you're putting in your studio to really present the best word that you have based on the idea, the mm-hmm. emotion, the whatever you want to convey. The, you know that that's what I I you know put the needle of uh, of effort uh, in comparison my work with my work. Yeah, I think the, the narrative too is you know mm-hmm. are you doing your uh, sometimes it's the narrative uh, that is stronger than the actual production of the piece. Mm-hmm. You know, is your is your narrative strong? And this is where I can give grace to certain artists that 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 present their work on Instagram. Uh, most of these artists I don't know, but I can say, you know, yeah, it took you about a minute and a half to make that piece, but it is strong conceptually. Yeah. It is exactly. strong narratively, right? And so I give you the credit and, you know, it, th- there's no rules of how, how long a painting must take right. in order for it to be good. <laughs> mm-hmm. So, uh, right. you know, uh, so in that, in that context, I can say, yeah, some of the artists do it well, but there are a few, mm-hmm. there are more than a few, as we know on social media, that you know that there's no context and you know there's no effort at all <laughs> and it's simply just to keep the algorithm you know just entertain people. just entertain the masses exactly it's entertain <laughs> yeah 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 you, you learn what what things entertain and so you you get that it's like that quick reward right uh, art is about yes. long-term reward you put the time in the yeah. studio the effort so you get a long-term re- return later when you get to That's see right. it and show it uh, when people get to see it but the quick the immediate return that that social media gives you is like a piece of candy right you you do something quick and like you record that people like it like oh i, I can treat. do more right here can do more because it gives you that quick reward of of viewership of or likes and comments and and that's the danger you know that's the danger where, that i was talking about in the video like where we're not thinking through our work we're just responding to it so i, I hope these questions my friends that we're going through can help you out let's well, go to I number that, four that, okay, I, go ahead. I just want to add to that there is a fear, though, that I think uh, that I, again, you know, I have to say, if you don't put the effort in e- either in the production of the work or in the narrative and you present mm-hmm. yourself, you are go- you're, you're going to have a harder time convincing uh, your public and f- convincing galleries that you want to be in or whichever that you are a serious, that you're taking your career seriously. The more stuff you put out there with no effort in it, just to get the likes, it may be entertaining. It's the little th- treat, like you say, you know, it's an instantaneous, but in the long term, it will come back to haunt you. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Absolutely <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, excellent. Let's go to number uh, four. We're getting, we're getting to it. Uh, how does the composition of each artwork contribute to the overall visual harmony or tension within the series. Like, I'm going to read that again, mm-hmm. those of you who are writing this down. Uh, how does the composition of each artwork contribute to the overall visual harmony or tension within the series? My favorite part on this yeah. question is the word tension, you know, because mm. uh, that that keeps, uh, that keeps uh, in my opinion, that's what keeps an artwork interesting when there's some sort of yes. tension. That, yes, that absolutely. Goes calls you in to, to try to, <clears throat> yep. to figure it out. Well, do you want me to go ahead on that yeah, one? Yeah, go, go. <laughs> start with that one. <laughs> okay, so how does the composition of each artwork contribute to the overall visual harmony or tension within the series? Uh, let me see. How does the composi- composition of each artwork... These com- complicated questions too, right? But <laughs> they, they actually make sense. Yes. Uh, yeah, I think uh, you know when all, all of us are doing... A series work, particularly, mm-hmm. I think you have to be very critical of what we do in a in an overall sense. So, mm-hmm. you know, I, I recall doing the show with you in Chicago, mm-hmm. and I remember starting in one narrative and mm-hmm. ending in another, uh, mm-hmm. primarily because maybe I had too much time to do them. <laughs> uh, and and then and that's a that's not a you know that's not a laughing matter but it's it's funny you know we can yeah and i'm i'm pretty honest about it you know when you have too much time you can dawdle with your work you know and mm-hmm. then and the narrative kind of gets messed up right mm. uh and i think when i 
prepared the show and I got it ready to go to Chicago, for example, I had to really then go in and look at each piece and I put them all up on the wall. I put them as I would see them in the gallery. I had to make sure that each piece was as strong as the one next to it. And it had to have the same, you know, narrative. It had to have the same intensity, the tension. Mm -hmm. And I think for the most part, you know, we pull it off or I pulled it off, you know, uh, and I, and it's a really important part of it because, and, and you know, funny too, because the ones that I felt might not have created as much, didn't have quite the tension that I'd hoped for in mm -hmm. the end were the ones that most people felt the same. So, mm. you know, your public really does see, they do understand and they see the, they can feel the, the vibration of a painting or an artwork mm -hmm. in a mm -hmm. series of work. So if your series is, is not consistent and you yeah. miss out on one or two of them, they're going to be very, it's going to be, it's going to stand out like a big sore thumb. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, no, I, yeah. I love that. And we and, all do and it. And it's, there's nothing wrong with right. it. It's a learning thing. We can't be on so, all the time. Each painting has its own energy and its life, as we right. talked about before. So, yeah, it, some are stronger voices and some are quieter voices. You know. Yeah, and that's one of the, uh, you know, the benefits of going and working on a series or a collection of works, mm -hmm. which could be as little as three or four or as large as whatever you yes, want. Of course, uh, not yeah. pieces, and um, you know that 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 you you can approach the same idea in different angles per se, you know, as you work on that series and really go deep versus wide. And I, I when I, when I start a series, I, I always think that, uh, out of whatever many I have, I I'm always thinking that there might be one or two that are just not going to make the cut that I'm going to maybe have to pull out at the end, just so it over. Yeah. And they will be for another yeah. series in the future because they're just not going to hit the mark. They're just not going to be. And that's uh, the critical uh, eye you need. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and, and what do you do when they're in mm -hmm. What's So that? you say, what did you just say there? You accept the fact that these? Yeah, I accept the fact that probably one out. or two yeah. might not be anything. So then they will be jesuit over and then be part yes. of another series, you know? Yeah, uh, yeah. yeah. And, well, and, and this is, that... the, no, I was gonna say, and this is for me like a rare time in which I'm working on just one piece versus a series. So. You know, I, I'm I'm approaching this with this might lead me to a series. You know that I'll start after this. Of you know, course. Knows? I was gonna say I think it will it will likely lead to something. You're experimenting, and you're also in a new environment, yeah. and exactly you're taking that. all of that that stimulation in, uh, mm -hmm. and it will show in your work. And mm -hmm. you know, start might as well start off with one. It's a lot cheaper to uh, you know instead of doing you know twenty paintings and then realizing that your narrative yeah. is wrong or something do the work on this painting, get it ready and it, and something will come. And then you say, okay, now I'm ready. Yeah. yeah. And, that, and that, I think that, we're ready. And that starts the series off very strongly. Right. Yeah. And I think that makes us ready for the next question, which I love. Uh, this will be question number five, which will be the last question that we're going to address today. And then mm -hmm. uh, make sure you tune in because in the next section, we're going to address the next five. But the, the last question for today is, how has this work contributed or challenged my personal artistic growth and development? I love that question too. It's yeah. about being critical, self, self-critical about our work, taking time to sit down and say, what did I learn? Right. I always, yeah. when I do coaching, I always tell artists, you know, you're, the painting that you're doing today is teaching you the lessons that you need to do the one that you're going to do tomorrow. Right. So yes. uh, don't, yeah. don't fall in love yeah, with it. Great. Don't fall in love with it because uh, it's just, this is just the step that you need to get to the one tomorrow. And you cannot get to that one tomorrow until you finish, you know, you get done with this one and, and see what you learn. Yeah. In, in my yeah. case, like in, for this series, I'm actually uh, getting a little bit tighter than I normally work um, where I like mm. to be more expressive and loose. This one, I'm actually pushing myself again in an, a little bit, trying to get a little uncomfortable so I can learn new things into, um, uh, you know, being more precise in certain ways. So that's what I'm bringing in the charcoal. So I love the precision of charcoal over the acrylic painting. And, uh, yes. you know, if you're watching video, you'll see, you know, some of those really uh, nice the dark areas. Yeah. Yeah. You know, that's very sort of 
you know, it's working with my finger, you know, to really get that, that intense uh, dark on one side and then soft on the other to give it that dimensional aspect of it. So I'm pushing myself, right, to, to, yes. to try to, yeah. to learn new things and see what happens. And I, that's why I love this question, you know, because I, I have to admit, I don't always do it. Sometimes, you know, uh, I know what works for me and I just go for what it works and, and yeah. that's where it ends, you know. But I, I love that this question makes us think about how am I challenging myself? Yeah, and I think, uh, well, I, I love that, you know, the fact that you are, you're open about that. And, you know, you have, you're always challenging yourself. That's the beauty of watching you work. Now I've known you for about four years, I guess. And uh, mm -hmm. we, you know, I've really seen a personal growth in your work, in your your confidence, uh, your narratives. Uh, mm -hmm. and But really the very strong part of your last four years i th i feel is your confidence in the materials and mm. you know you've you've built a certain confidence in your work through the use of the materials you really mastered them so that that i commend you. you for and your your narrative has always been strong something i can identify with a lot of people mm -hmm. can identify with uh it's about the person about the about life the cycles yeah right i think it's really Thank important you. and i think you, you that hasn't that has not yet burnt itself out, you know, if you know what I mean, right. like it's still a strong yeah. concept. And I think that that is, uh, always remember that that's a really good point to remember is that your, your ideas, uh, providing you can still come up with new ideas, you know, mm -hmm. uh, in that narrative that you've made your own, such as yours, mm -hmm. uh, when you when you can't come up with new ideas, I think that's when the narrative has to change. Yeah. That's the time that that your narrative personally has to change, and the world might that. have to change. Yeah, yeah I you know I myself am also in a transition, and I think uh, you know I've always looked at my work and I, I've I've always wanted a gentleness to my work, and I always tend to go a little bit assertive with my work. I get a little bit assertive with the textures and the applications and the splashy paint that kind mm -hmm. of thing and i have always wanted and it's always been at the back of my head and again it comes back to what we were talking about earlier about you know changing courses in midstream as it were right are you <laughs> i you know i'm always fearful of doing that and mm -hmm. yet i've always wanted to i've wanted to come to a certain serenity in my work Mm. Uh, that I am trying to find in my personal life, a yeah. certain serenity that allows me to, I'm currently working in a garden, you know, I'm mm -hmm. working outside, I'm working outside during the most beautiful days, warm, mind you, yeah. but beautiful. Yeah. yeah. And I'm, and I'm starting to see that the environment is having, uh, an impact on what I'm doing creatively on the canvases themselves. And these are big canvases. The colors are net nature. I'm being uh, inspired by the leaves and the grass and the flowers that are around me. I'm not painting those flowers. I'm just using them as the color, you know. I'm, so I'm working in colors that are much more gentle. And, you know, I'm staying away from those big black areas where I really loved, you know, the Franz Klein kind of really assertive marks. Yeah. I'm trying to, trying to push those back into the background and bring mm -hmm. out the the serenity and so that's more subtle mm -hmm. yeah but i can't go so far that it wouldn't look like somebody else's work i'm not mm -hmm. that confident i'm not gerhard richter uh, that <laughs> you know i have a, a certain i have a I, I, sh, I, I have the ability to just progress and change mildly right i'm not mm -hmm. gonna i am not gonna be the gerhard richter that goes from you know, one series to the next series, to the next series. Um, I, I do it a little bit more subtly. I think. Yeah. Great. Yeah. Awesome. No, I, I love yeah. that. Thank you for sharing. Thank you for sharing. And, and, you know, it's really a treat for me to, to see uh, the progress of your paintings because we always exchanging pictures of what we're working on. Yeah. <laughs> so uh, before anyone gets and to that's, see that. And that is a really a good point too. If you, if you don't mind, it just mm -hmm. things come yeah, to yeah, my head ahead. as we're talking here. Uh, you, you know, you and I have this really good relationship where we, where I'm confident enough to say, Hey, what do you think of this one? What would you yeah, do? And, 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 <laughs> and yeah. And we, we bounce it 
as we've said to our listeners, you know, but I think that that's a really important part for any artist to have is to have that. It might not be a, you know, wife or a husband or, you know, partner or something with it, whichever, you know, find a friend that you're really, that you really Project like. Idea. Yeah. And, and use them as a sounding board. And there's nothing wrong with yeah. that because right. what we see and what they see are probably two different things. Right. I mean, we're much right. more invested in the work. And when someone's right. not as invested in the application of the work, they can be much more open to the understanding or seeing the narrative if it's if it's gone awry or if it's not there or if it is there, and they can they can inform you of it. Uh, yeah. someone that you can trust, you know, and they Absolutely. may not tell you uh, and look, you know, criticism, we talk about it right off the bat. You know, we have to be critical of our own work. Let others be critical of our work. People that we know, we can trust, we accept, right? I think it's really important. Mm -hmm. And don't shy away from that critical. You know, be critical of yourself. Because I think... I love we're, that. We're, yeah, if we're not, then we're just, we're just cutting our own throats. Uh, right. And it's a, it's a, a bigger struggle if we don't do it, you know? Yeah. Super. Yeah. Well, thank you. Hey, uh, no, question. I, I think that's a, that's a great way to end our chat for today uh, with the first five questions, 10 critical questions that we're covering you know, that we must ask ourselves in the studio. And today mm -hmm. we cover the first five. Do not miss the next episode. Next week, we're going to cover the next five, the last five, which are also very yeah. good uh, questions to ask ourselves. And a uh, good thing that we did this in... Uh, in two episodes, we were able to actually go deep into each one and really have a good conversation. Uh, my friends, we would love to hear from you. Let us know mm -hmm. to Drew and I. You can find us on Instagram. You can find Drew at Drew Harris Art. You can find me at Sergio Gomez Art. Pretty much our names and the word art after. And uh, you can find us there. Send us a message if you watch this on video or if you listen to the episode and it make you think, it make you also ask your own questions. If you have questions of your own that you ask yourself that we haven't covered, let us know. We would love to hear from you too. What questions you ask yourself in the studio, because uh, we can yeah. learn from you as well. You know, we're we're, we're oh, all ears. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because we, you, you know, we we're going from it from a from one perspective. But as I say, you know, someone else might just say, "Hey, can I add to that?" And, yeah. And those are the important questions we need to, or the important dialogue that we need to encourage. Exactly. So yeah. Exactly. Thank you. So thank you, friends. If you're watching this over YouTube, please uh, mm -hmm. consider subscribing to the show. If you are listening through the podcast, make sure also that you subscribe to the show, share it with your friends, and, and give us a yeah. review. Yeah, give us a review because that helps us to get it to more people. Thank you, guys, and we will see you at the next level. Goodbye, Drew. But wait, before you leave this video, if you are an artist who wants to grow your art career and wants to achieve greater success, make sure you check out the Art Next Level program you will find a link under this video. Don't forget to subscribe and check out the next video that we have recommended just for you.